Hi, everybody. It's really, really great to see you. I'm so happy to be here and to see your faces. Um, my name is Julia. I'm an artist and I live in New Mexico. Does anyone know where New Mexico is? Yeah, some of you do. It's really cool. It's a really amazing desert, but I used to live in the Bay Area and I used to work at BAM PFA. And so this is really fun for me to see all of you and to remember what we used to do with Gallery Studio. So today we're going to be talking about the work of the artist Ron Nagel. His work is, I think, really special and really cool. And when I make work, sometimes I think about the way he makes work and it's a little bit similar in terms of the way he thinks about what he makes before he makes it and then what he makes work out of. I actually make art out of clay, just like he did. Um, and so today we're going to be thinking about drawing and then we're going to be thinking about making things out of clay. So to start, we should look at a little bit of Ron Nagel's artwork and we can talk a little bit about his process. So why don't we begin? So the way that Ron Nagel starts thinking about the art that he's going to make is by making drawings. And when he makes drawings, he calls it peripheral cognition. Now, you guys unmute yourself. Does anyone know what that means, peripheral cognition? What do those words mean? Do you know? Anyone want to try? OK, that's OK. So peripheral is a word that means kind of to the sides or to the edges. So something that's in the corner of your eye. And cognition, does anyone know what that means? It means the way that we think. So when he makes these drawings, it's like thoughts that are kind of flying around on the edges of his mind that he puts onto paper. So let's go, let's think about actually the first one again. So when we think about this one, and you guys, why don't you unmute yourselves for this and we can just call it out. When you look at this drawing, what are some of the first things that you think of? Um, I think of like the white bumpy ball as like a crumpled up piece of paper. Oh, I love that. I love that. A crumpled up piece of paper. I can definitely imagine that. If you imagine running your hand on it, you can almost feel the bumps, right? What are some of the other things that you think of when you see this picture? Vanilla ice cream. Vanilla ice cream. That's amazing. That's really interesting because unlike the crumpled piece of paper where you can imagine that it's hard or, or rough, Vanilla ice cream is more like melty and soft, right? What else? Rice, maybe rice. Like rice. Oh, I love that too. A different texture as well, right? So that's soft, but it's still kind of like bumpier, right? What about the other colors that you see there? What about that? black part what does that make you think? maybe like chocolate chocolate syrup fudge syrup chocolate syrup dripping down mm -hmm. love that so like a drippy chocolate syrup you can imagine how heavy that drip might be almost like boop, like it's gonna fall right those are really really good ideas with this drawing i love what you guys are thinking of when you look at it let's look at the next one and we're not going to talk about this one as much, but you can kind of imagine the same thing, right? So we have those textures, things that are sharp, things that are bumpy. Maybe it reminds you of something. Let's go to the next one. Okay, so let's look at these two. Do you guys see the one on the yellow paper? Yeah. What does that one remind you of? Maybe donut that like stretched. A, a worm. A I love that. Anything else? Ruler. A what? Ruler. Oh, a ruler. Right? A ruler? That's pretty cool. I like that idea that it's like a ruler that's like bendy, like that. I love that. And you see a seashell. A seashell. I love that too. Because it's got that part in the middle that's a little bit like a hole, right? That reminds me of a seashell as well. It reminds me of an octopus arm. Oh, I love that. An octopus arm without its tentacles, but still with its bumps, right? Both of the drawings, they remind me of octopus arms. 
that's super cool. And I can see how the other one where it's like coming over a little bit could be definitely like an octopus arm or a creature like about to come out. I love those things. So when he makes drawings, Ron, you can think that Ron Nagel is thinking about the texture and maybe what it would remind other people of. And he's also thinking about shapes, right? So let's go to the next one. So when we look at these four different drawings, let's not call it out, but just think about all of the different shapes that you can see, right? We can see some circles, maybe some squares, triangles. There's also a lot of squigglies going on, right? So keep that in your mind. When we are gonna be making our own drawings, we're gonna think a lot about all of these things, shapes, textures, and maybe what these things remind us of. Okay, so now we're gonna see what the end of Ron Nagel's process is. So it starts with drawings and then it moves to sculptures. So let's call out with this one, what are some of those shapes and colors and textures? What do they remind you of? Yeah, Freya, what do you think? Yeah, go ahead and just call out, you guys. Oh, yeah, Freya, yeah. Coral reef, maybe coral reef, the rocks, and then those purple straight looks like the plants. Oh, that's cool. That's super cool. What else? Soap what? bar. The base is like a soap bar. <laughs> a soap bar, I love that. What else? What else? Yeah, Freya, what do you want to say? The ocean. Ocean, the ocean, I like that. So it's cool to see you guys sort of thinking in the same, but not all the same way. So we have a soap bar, which I love that it's so smooth and soft. And it's also kind of a square, which most soaps are, right? Then we have the idea of the coral reef and the ocean, because we have that really, really rough texture. And then the squigglies. And do you guys remember the squigglies in the last four drawings? You can see how they're kind of connected, right? Okay, let's go to the next one. Okay, what do we think about this? What is the like, um, Maybe the lines, not the round part, but the one that goes like this around sort of reminds me like the Grand Canyon and then the behind it looks like a sunset. Super cool, super cool. What else? Um, it reminds me of waves crashing and then a sunset. I love that. I love how that shape reminds you both of such different things, right? Because we have this little shape like that that looks like a canyon, but also like a wave. And, and once I heard the other opinion, now it also reminds me of like the side of a mountain and then um, the sun. <laughs> what else? Um, I think um, it kind of looks like a zombie coming out of this stone thing. Tell me more about what which part of it looks like a zombie. The the way the curly thing. Is it like a zombie like like out of the ground like that? It's pushing itself out of the ground behind that stone. Thing. Um, it reminds me of that drawing that we saw earlier. Oh, oh my goodness! Let's put a pin in that because that's a very good observation. But Freya, you were about to say something too, right? One more time. Yeah. One more time for you. Swirly part could be a solar flare and this um, circle part the sun. Ah, I love that. So with all of these responses, you guys are talking about both the shape, right? That half circle shape behind it, which reminds a lot of people of the sun, but also maybe of a gravestone or a rock. And then that shape of the curl that comes down. Before we move on, and before we get back to, I think Sophia's comment about the drawings, which is a very good observation. I wanna just look at the texture and the color. And we're not, we're not gonna call them out, but think about the texture and the color and how those things might change how you think about this. Like, if this were purple, would it change how you look at it? Maybe, but maybe not, right? Okay, so I think it was Sophia who said, that reminds me of the drawing. So now we're gonna go to the last slide. Does this remind anybody of anything? The first the drawing. 
the very first drawing, right? Let's go back and look at that very first drawing again. So it's not the same, right? But it's pretty similar. We have similar elements. Let's, uh, everyone remember the way the drawing looks and now let's go look at the sculpture again. Okay, so what are some of the similar elements that we see? The white circle. The part and then the, on top of like the yellow part. Right, so we have that white part, which remember we talked about it being uh, rice, a crumpled piece of paper, uh, ice cream, right? And we can, when we look at it now in sculpture form, those things are still kind of there, right? And then remember that black chocolate ice cream drippy part? We still have that, right? And we talked about how heavy that drip would feel and still feels really heavy, doesn't it? Can anyone think of some of the differences between this and the drawing? Um, this one, it kind of looks like, um, the walnut shape on top is like um, the when you look at it, the the top when you look at the bottom of that thing on top, there's a little like gap, and there's a black gap right near the end of the blue drip. It reminds me of of rice with dip and then walnut. Um. The chocolate drip is dripping on the other side. Good observation. Um, I think that like the part, the blue one and the white one on top of like the rice or something, um, that reminds me of the Arctic because the white ones are like the ice and then the blue ones are like the ocean. That's great, you guys. So what we can take away from this is that you can see the drawing inspired Ron and got his his mind kind of turning about what he wanted to eventually make, but it wasn't exactly the same. And I love that everyone's thinking about some of the associations we can make between what we see and things in the real world. So we're gonna keep those things in the back of our mind when we make our own. Okay, so are you guys ready to make your own art? Yeah? Okay, well, let's, let's do it. So the first thing that we're gonna do is draw, just like Ron Nagel draws to get that peripheral cognition. Remember that somewhere in the corner thoughts? So everybody get some paper and whatever you wanna draw with, you can have a lot of colors, you can have no colors. It's sort of up to you. So let's get that stuff ready and I'm gonna show you mine. Okay, whoops. All right, everyone can see that okay? Okay, so guys, as we do this, if you wanna unmute yourself so we can all kind of talk together. And if you wanna ask any questions as I'm going, please do. And I'm gonna ask you guys some questions about what you're thinking and feeling and seeing, okay? Sound good? Okay, so let's start. I'm gonna start with this red because I like it. And to start, I'm starting to think about those shapes and textures that we saw before. So to start, I think I'm going to start with a lumpy circle. Before I go any farther, we're going to make a lot of different little drawings. So nobody gets stuck. And why don't, don't everybody um, choose, a, choose a shape to start with? And let's just jot it down. So any shape that you, you're thinking of. Just jot it down on the paper. Okay, so we're gonna keep going. I'm not gonna worry too much about this. I like my lumpy circle. I think I'm gonna make it a little bit lumpier. I'll just put a little lumps in there. And I think I'm gonna add on to my lumpy circle. I think I'm gonna add one of those little soaps. Remember that we talked about before? And to me, this is really smooth and this is really lumpy. We'll add some more lumps in there. So let's see. And you know what? I think with mine, I want this to be really smooth. So I'm gonna fill it all in, fill it all in. What do you guys think? Are you gonna leave your shapes 
open? Are you gonna fill them in? Do your shapes seem like they're textured or are they smooth? What do you think? Okay, so where we go from here, I think that I, I liked some of those shapes that Ron Nagel was playing with before. Remember the all the rectangles and the circles and the triangles and the squigglies? So I think I'm gonna do something sharp because he kind of put in some, some things that were smooth and some things that were sharp. So I think I'm gonna put something sharp <laughs> that goes through my lumpy piece. And just for fun, I'm gonna change the color. So let's try this, this little gray one. So my sharp thing, I think I'm just gonna put some spikes on it. Okay. Uh, we have a little bit spiky. We have a little bit of lumpy. How are we doing? Everybody with me so far? Yeah? Okay. In a minute, we're going to share our drawings with each other. So stay tuned for that. Okay. All right. Well, that's, this is one good drawing. I'm, I'm happy with it, but I think I'm going to make another one. What do you guys think? Do you want to make one or do you want to make another one? I want to make um, as many as possible without running out of clay. All right. Well, then let's do another drawing. So remember, nobody gets stuck because these are just for fun, right? We're just getting all of our in the corner ideas up. So I'm going to pull out a little few more colors, a little pink one. And I think for this one, I'm going to start with a rectangle. And if if you guys don't know how to draw a rectangle, you can follow along with me as I go. I switch, I changed my mind. I'm going to do green. So if you wanted to draw a rectangle, you could start with a square, and then you could have some lines that go back. Sorry, this is a rectangle. We're drawing a box. <laughs> So you can start with a, a rectangle and have some lines that go back that are all in line with one another, right? And then we can connect those lines some way and we can draw a box. I'm gonna start with that. And I think I want mine to be like hairy, like a, a fuzzy little thing. So I'm gonna do these little fuzzies on here. And think about there's so many different kinds of textures in the world, right? There's fuzzy, there's sharp, smooth, crumbly, lumpy, soft, a million different kinds of textures. So this one in my mind is fuzzy, I love fuzzies. All right, and now, I think I might add in some, maybe some little squiggles like he did too. So I'm gonna just do some like this. Sometimes sound effects really help when you're drawing. And just for fun, I really liked that sun shape, so I'm gonna do one of those too. And have it be just like that. And in my mind, that's very smooth, but it could be different. All right, so I'm liking how this is going. And I'm feeling like I think that could probably move on to the clay portion for me. But how about, how about we share our drawings with each other? Doesn't matter if they're done or not. Well, let's just see what we're doing. So you guys wanna to switch to gallery view so you can all see each other's drawings? 
Let's see. Oh, very nice. And yeah, just like Severine is doing, put them up to the camera. Oh, look at those, you guys. Those are so cool. I didn't finish the bottom one, but. Oh, let's see that one. Oh, nice. Oh, I love it. I love the colors. And the triangle is going to be a pyramid, actually. Oh, it's a pyramid. I see it. I see it. Oh, that's great, Sophia. Wow, Archon, that's so cool. You like mine? Where? Who? <laughs> Who's talking? Oh, Oscar. Oh, I love it. Oh, nice. I love how you guys are all using so many different textures and so many different colors. Oh, wow. Katie, that's great. I love the how lumpy and the little hairs. So cool. Oh, Vitamin, those are so good. Okay, so do we feel ready to move on to our sculptures? Yeah? So remember, you can keep working on these drawings for forever. <laughs> like, like, um, like he does, these are something that you can do to find those little dusty corners of your brain and just get them out into the world. I think it's a really nice thing to do to try to just think about shapes and textures all the time. But let's try to take some of these things and bring them into reality, three dimensions. So let's put away our drawing stuff for the moment, but keep your paper out so you can see it because we're gonna use it as, a, as an inspiration. And I'm just gonna take you back to my workspace. There we go. So we're gonna work with any clay you have. So that could be, I have Sculpey today, but you could have Play-Doh, maybe homemade Play-Doh, modeling clay, maybe even real clay. Any clay that you have is okay. So we're gonna have them all out. Make sure you can see all your colors. And then it's also a good thing to have some things that you can make texture with. And so my things today are uh, this weird thing. Uh, I don't know, but it's really lumpy and bumpy, see? Uh, I have this cool little rubber brush, uh, a clay knife, and a fork. Well, whatever you have will work. So I'm looking at my first drawing, which remember was kind of lumpy, and I'm going to decide I want to work with this color first. And the name of this color is Gentle Lavender, which I think is pretty funny. So I'm gonna just take a little bit of it to start. And if you're working with Sculpey like me, you might need to warm it up in your hands first because it can kind of get hard. Ooh, and then I'm gonna just start mashing it once it's warm. And something to think about is all of the sculptures that we saw before, none of them are very big. They're all pretty small. So we don't have to make really big sculptures either if we don't want to. Ours can be any kind of size that we want them to be. So has everyone got their clay ready? Yeah, give me a thumbs up if your clay is good. I to just go. started sculpting. You already did? Oh, that's great. Yes. That's wonderful. The last one I drew, I'm making like, I'm making a, uh, a 3D. So the outside is gonna be circle. The, the middle is gonna just be flat in the um back is going to be circles that's great i love that okay so let's start and just like severine's doing you can start with a, a base shape that you're going to work with so my gentle lavender one's going to be lumpy and so to make it lumpy i'm just kind of going to squeeze it a little bit but your shape could be any kind of way so if you want it to be smooth you can kind of roll it you want it to be flat, you can do this cool technique. If you wanted to make a box, say, then you can use your fingers to kind of make the sides flat as you go along, kind of like this. Everyone see that? So remember, your Sculptures in your drawing don't need to be exactly the same, but remember the things that you were kind of discovering in your drawing. We can bring some of those into your sculptures as well. All right, so 
with my first one, the lumpy one, I remember my drawing had some spikes in it. So I'm gonna do a spiky thing now. <laughs> Let's see. What kind of textures are you guys working with now? Soft. Soft, that's great. And what shape is your soft texture on? Um, I didn't decide yet. Yeah, that's okay. Sometimes it has to, you ha have to come to it while you're doing it. Any other textures that you're working with? Mine are soft and hard. Soft and hard? Wow. How are you doing that? Which part is soft, soft. and which part is hard? These are kind of hard. See? Some are kind of hard and some are kind of and some are kind of soft. That makes sense. There's a lot of things in, in nature that are sometimes hard and sometimes soft, right? Like who said a seashell earlier? A seashell is kind of sometimes hard and sometimes soft. All right, so I've got my little spiky thing. Now, in my drawing, it was like this, but I don't know if I can really make that happen in, uh, in clay. So I'm gonna play with it a little bit. Maybe I'll something like this. And if you're working with any kind of clay, you know you can stick it together by pushing it. You can also blend it into each other. That really sticks it pretty good. All right, so we're going to work on these for for only a few more minutes, but like I was saying earlier, you can keep working on these for as long as you want and take everything we talked about today as kind of your inspiration. So we're going to work on these for maybe about three more minutes and then we're going to share. So if you've done one and you want to try to start another one, feel free. On that one. Has anyone tried working with a fuzzy texture yet? I think I'm going to try to do that right now. And one of the coolest things that we were talking about when we were talking about Ron Nagel's work is what the work reminded us of. Like, remember like the Arctic, the snow in the blue or the zombie popping out of the stone grave. That one was really, really cool. So as you're working on your own sculptures, you can kind of just imagine, what does this remind me of? You don't have to have a good answer either. You can just think of it. Like maybe it's one thing, maybe it's a million different things. All right, I'm gonna try to make a fuzzy texture with this crazy ball. Ooh, what do you guys think? Does that look fuzzy? Not really. I finished my first thing. Now it reminds me of a bunny rabbit. Oh, wow. It has a fuzzy that? head and its ears are kind of like, they like to fall off. <laughs> I love that, I love that. Anyone else finished a first sculpture? Still working on it? That's okay. You can try all kinds of different ways of working with the clay. Like what I'm doing right now is pinching just a little bit of it up to try to get that fuzzy texture that looks like fur. You can also try rolling so it's super, super smooth. 
And you can also try flattening it out so that it's really, really thin and draping it over. Well, maybe we'll do that next. Okay, let's try that next. So this one looks fuzzy. Okay, so we're gonna work for one more minute and then we're gonna share. Ooh, wow, Katie, I love it. That reminds me of a dragon. My sister's name is Katie. Oh, sorry. Okay. So you can also try pinching like this. So it's really, really smooth. We're rolling on the table. This color is called Princess Pearl, <laughs> which is also really funny. I'm gonna try draping it. Okay, everybody feeling ready to share? What do you think? I'm helping Mama with one of her sculpture ideas. Oh, oh that's good. All right. Bye everyone. Thank you so much for coming and joining and making art related to Ron Nagel. And thank you for making such amazing sculptures and we'll see you next time.